Okay. <laughs> but, you know, this is the figurative piranha, at least. How about that? Right? <coughs> Well, don't you have to be in a lot of trouble already for them to get a little peckish on you? Like dead, for example. That's not, yeah. Yeah, they never want that. Mm. Yeah. But this is the James Bond movie type one. Okay. You know, like, you know, the, the piranha, the piranha moat. Yeah. This is for number two. Oh. That was the thing. Uh, I'm going to think this works. I don't know. Here's a, here's, a, here's a fun, I mean, there's just so much stuff going on all the time, right? There's a lot of great work going on. Here's a, here's a fun thing that just came across the, the bow, bit, so, so to speak. Um, be an interesting piece to, you know, I haven't really looked at it properly yet, but the pace of cultural evolution. So, so this work looks at um, biological evolution and human evolution, and it's in terms of uh, tools, I think, technology, right? Animal morphologies and rate of change of human technologies. And what th this happens kind of in all sorts of systems, right? There's a learning, I mean, even like terrorist activities, there's a speeding up of the inter time, the, the time between events, right? And it's, it can be um, attributed to kind of a, le to a learning process, which, you know, in evolution, it's a different kind of story, but maybe there's a, you know, things are getting faster, right? So, <coughs> you know, the, the results, the claims here, this, I mean, this is a really nice piece of work, right? Cultural evolution is faster than biological evolution. Fair enough, fine, but you had to look at where these things are in terms of their um, time, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, so it just seems like a, a nice piece. So we're going to get to this sort of thing later on, and maybe I'll pull this in, but scaling is a big, big, big piece that we'll get to. We've talked a lot about power law size distributions, but how things scale uh, more generally is another, another big story. All right. I mean, I guess I've been saying this, but there's just so much interesting stuff to be working on now. Keep going. Good. Okay. So, um, <coughs> what else is going on? All right. So, we're going to talk about uh, complex networks, right? It's going to go on for a little while because it's huge. It's gigantic. Um, really huge. And I had this, uh, uh, you know, because it's, it's a real thing. That's what's happening, right? There's data, and these people have been doing a lot of work, um, but everyone has. I mean, there are networks everywhere. And I had these, uh, these points, right? So 20,000, you know, I was going to put, put my goals. Because this is ridiculous. This is like, <coughs> you know, this is um, <coughs> when you can measure your, um, you know, kilo citations, right? When you can start <laughs> talking about that. It's <laughs> pretty serious. Um, I think there might be a few, uh, there must be some at 100,000. Like maybe the Fast Fourier Transform paper. It's a famous one that had a lot early on. Uh, yeah, and, and so this is close to 18,000. So that's... Huge. Although maybe we should have, um, I was trying to, I was going to look these up, platinum and, right, for record sales. Do you know what they are? What's the hierarchy? Yeah. You could tweet it. <laughs> right. Um, but, you know, a 10 is, a 10 in, for citations, 10 would be a landmark. Right, it is. 10 citations. You tweet about that. You're like, yay. 100, it's a big deal. 1,000 is like, yeah. But 10,000. Th this is this is out of control. You can't stop this, right? This is just madness. What was that? Can you just stop caring at that point and like go? <laughs> <laughs> no, these these people all care. They're all still working really hard. Yeah, but um, well, I mean, you know, they haven't. Uh, certainly, they've moved on, and they've also worked on you know some of this stuff again in different ways. And yeah, yeah. But this is, you know, when these papers appeared, of course, they have zero citations. They were just uh, sort of in a vacuum, really, you know, with respect to networks. Maybe they appeared in nice places. Is this kind of how Strogas got, this seems like this author is excited about a ton of stuff. Was this like... This was a big, this is a big thing for him, but... Um, was he like big in other ways before it? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can look up his history. So synchronization is his big story, right? Yeah, so he has yeah. the book Sync, but that comes well before. Mm -hmm. So, funny story, I came to the U.S. to work with him, right? So here's my little small world story. I came to the US to work with him, and I walked into, you know this, right? I walked into MIT and said, where is Strogatz's office? And we'd had some correspondence. And I'd just finished my master's three days before in Australia. You know. And, um, and <laughs> the person there said, uh, Cornell. So um, he, <laughs> he said, <laughs> he had said there might be 
a change of location. And uh, that turned out to be true. So he did the wrong thing. He got awarded a teaching award. He won the, U the I think it's the Baker Award, the MIT-wide award for teaching. Um, usually a bad thing to do because that means you're not, you know, a psycho research person, right? You actually care about something else. You have to kind of plead innocence, like you accidentally taught it too well. That would be a defense. But there, I think at that time there were like three in a row who all got the teaching award and gone. Yeah. So he moved. I, th I mean, he moved. I mean, and this is him. He moved. So, uh, and, and he's done, you know, fantastically well. He was doing fantastically well, and he's still doing fantastic. And he has all the, yeah, all the stuff in the New York Times, right? The math thing. Uh, but synchronization is his big story. So um, I would think. But he's done lots of other things. Um, I think the first time I ever saw anything was Ian Stewart. Some, uh, you know Ian Stewart? Famous English mathematician. Writes tons of books about all sorts of popular things. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, um, <coughs> yeah, let's, let's all draw a world map. <laughs> let's do that for 10 minutes. Let's see how that works out. Where is India? Um, okay. <coughs> I know. There's a lot of complexities. Uh, so, uh, it was an article about, it's really, it's a fun article. It's in Scientific American, maybe 92 or something. It's, it's uh, locomotion of animals, right? So, elephants actually have four knees. So, they're the only ones who do this. And, you know, all the, and uh, kangaroos. You know, so all these different ways of moving around. It's very, very nice. Lots of good math. Uh, so that's his thing. Uh, Barabas is famous for some other pieces. He worked with um, Gene. He, he was a graduate student of Gene Stanley at BU. Gene Stanley is enormous, right? So he has 100,000 um, citations himself. Uh, but he's a, sort of one of the big uh, uh, parents, if you like, of, of complex systems. Uh, Ray Calvert was a student of, of Laszlo. So... So the story here is that he said to Reka, because she had another year left in her PhD, she had some time to kind of do some stuff. He said, okay, networks are interesting, right? He tried to do some stuff earlier on. So let's, uh, let's do structure, dynamics, and then dynamics on networks. And that's like a couple of months each, right? And so we're just now starting to do, I mean, structure went on for a long, long time. Now people are talking about temporal networks as if that's a new thing. I mean, we've known about it for a long time, but it's actually become sort of a hot new topic. So it is a long time after that. All right, so uh, Raker is now at UPenn. Laszlo is at Northeastern. He has a big position there. Uh, Duncan is actually at Microsoft. So he went from, so I worked with him at Columbia, right? And he was in sociology, actually coming from math. And so I, you know, we lived in the sociology um, environment. He went off to Yahoo, which had a research place, right, for a while, and then Yahoo was not such a good place and exploded and did all sorts of things and they they didn't all ship out collectively but they m may have moved to Microsoft and so there's a New York uh, office there. Uh, lots of interesting things. Good people. Okay, again, this is just to impress upon you that this is a giant field that's emerged uh, and has matured pretty well but there's a lot to, lot to go. Um, you know, there's always this sort of hunt for universality early on. Like everything is my network. My network explains all networks. My mechanism is everyone. So we've had some fights about that, and now we're still, you know, more and more data keeps coming. There are more things to explain. And right. So uh, review articles, uh, you might like to look at these. So it's Albert and Barabasi again. This is, uh, so they've done well for themselves again here. Couple, you know, well, it's got the, the, uh, <laughs> the 10K. And um, Mark Newman, who's huge in networks, really an enormous uh, figure. He's done a lot of the really powerful mathematical stuff. Um, Lots of good combinatorics in here. Okay, so this is his review piece. Uh, and then there's another, so this is a few years later. Again, you know, more stuff. Just this is from a European perspective. Newman is at Michigan. Um, and these guys are, I think, all in Italy. Okay, so that's a good number of citations, right? So, all right, okay, good. Uh, so there are a couple of textbooks floating around. The, 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 your, um, people's courses have, I mean, you could say matured, but have, you know, they produce textbooks from them. I don't know. Do we still need textbooks? <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, I'm kind of against them. Okay, so, but Newman has one, uh, which, you know, is, is some, you know, you could get a lot from this, and if you really want to go to it, you could you get to his uh, textbook. Uh, so, John Kleinberg is a superhero um, computer scientist, um, MacArthur genius, you know, 
rightly so, actually, at, uh, at Cornell as well. So he works uh, sometimes with Strogatz. Uh, Easley is in the economics department, I think. So this is a course they taught together, which is economics and uh, you know, lots of computer science things. So that, that turns out to be, um, that, that turned into another textbook. All right, so there's that. Um, there are a couple of very popular books around. This maybe is not so much, but this is covering, this is the, this is a science writer writing about the science at the time, right? So these are talking about all these people, Watts and Newman. There have been a few documentaries. Um, actually, I should, I should find those, you know. You don't need to watch them, but they exist, documentaries. All right. Uh, and of course, this one. So Gladwell, right? So Gladwell has this piece. I mean, years ago, uh, he came to talk to, I, mean, I don't know when this was exactly, we talked to Duncan about some of these things, the whole small world stuff. Um, this is a blend of a lot of different things. We will touch on this. Um, this is a problem, right? Because this match sitting on the front is a complete, I, I would say, a, mis, uh, a misrepresentation of, of what happens in social systems. And this, this really diverts your thinking about it, right? This looks like this is the reason for things taking off. Yeah? The forests burn because they're connected together. You know? And we tend to, with social phenomena, so with forests, we'd say, okay, yeah, it's dry and whatever, and we need to put up these, we've been thinking about this, um, put up some more forest breaks and so on. We wouldn't go and find the match and say, this is why it took off, right? I'll say this again, because I can't help myself. Um, but we do that with people, right? So something spreads and you go and find the, the, you know, the seed. And they're the reason it spread, right? So it's a nice story because it's about one individual. We can imagine that happening again. We can't think about groups very well. We're terrible with groups. They scare us. We can't map our brains into groups. Uh, if you're a Pratchett fan, there's some nice stuff with uh, trying to map a brain into uh, a hive of bees. Very impossible. You can get into one little brain, but it's a disaster because it's all crazy. But wrapping your head into the hive mind is hard. Anyway, but it <coughs> lots of good things in Pratchett. Okay, all right. So uh, these guys also wrote uh, a couple of popular books for themselves. There was Duncan actually turned his PhD thesis into a book, and that was a huge thing. So it's just small worlds. Um, so this is a more popular book written later on. There's linked, six degrees, all right. So there's some arguments about whose ideas are better, you know. Uh, but it's a big thing. Um, yeah, Duncan has a book now which is called um, Everything is Obvious. Once you know the answer, right? Which is actually absolutely my line, right? So this is my line. So he won't, he probably doesn't remember this. But this is a thing that I would go harp on all the time because I really detested the word obvious. And uh, in trivial, for example, like in math, you know, people will say, this is a great joke, right? Yeah, so there's a mathematician is, um, you know, and they're like, x equals, and then they're, um, so yeah, it starts off and they're like, trivially, x equals, and then they wander over to the window and st like stare at it for half an hour. And then they're like, yes, trivially, x equals, right? <laughs> so, we, so we do this sort of thing all the time, right? It's obvious, it's trivial, blah, blah, blah. Be and once you see how to get through a maze or whatever it is, Fine. It's easy, and it's hard to then not know the answer and imagine struggling, right? But that's what, you know, so unfortunately a lot of teaching, a lot of education is about, you know, you've kind of given the path and you just have to like, you know, the, the steps are there on the floor, right? It's like the old dance things. Like, okay, number three, number four. You're led down the garden path, right? Uh, but it's really actually some horrible thing. You have to thrash through a forest and climb over dead monks, right? <laughs> The monks kind of help, actually. <laughs> yeah, where they, yeah, if they've, yeah, the monk bodies. That's the thing. You can't see them. That's true. <coughs> <laughs> Dead monks. Okay. Uh, lots of other books. Uh, these, you know, some of these are going into into the past, but complex social networks. So, uh, Vega Redondo, lovely guy. He's uh, an economist. So, getting excited about th physics. There's a couple of hydrologists. Uh, so, but with some physics stuff floated it, floating around here, so this is a, you know, this is a lot of stuff that I worked on. Um, not a book writer. Uh, this is a much more harder math kind of situation. This is more of a physics kind of, uh, Guido has got the physics stuff. Uh, Romu, so he was a, uh, he's a lovely guy. He was a, um, a postdoc uh, when I was a PhD student. At, we're in the same group at MIT. So, uh, they, they will get to this later, so they have a paper in PRL which was really a, a big hit because it showed that certain, these scale-free networks, which we'll get to, uh, diseases or whatever you have, spread incredibly bad, awfully on these things, right? Okay, so they showed there was no epidemic threshold. There wasn't, you know, once you just seed it and the whole thing goes boom. So 
there's some details in there, but uh, Vespignani has gone on, so he's a big guy, he's now at um, Northeastern, so he has a lot of work on real spreading, okay? So some of these things have moved in, as I've been trying to say, I guess, have moved into very serious outfits where they're trying to, you know, they're looking at how um, flights work around the world and so on, and really trying to, in a detailed way, quantify how things will spread, right? It's not, so you do all your toy models and those sorts of things, and that's all very good. You get some insight, but then you have to get down to the nuts and bolts. And that's very, that's, that's hard. It's very hard. Uh, again, more uh, pure math sort of stuff from um, Fan Chung. This is a classic work coming across from the social network. So there's a whole social networks uh, group in sociology who kind of got upset that all these physicists appeared and said, we understand all of your things. <laughs> uh, as they tend to do. There's an XKCD comic about that, which is pretty, pretty spot on. Um, Anyway, so uh, yeah, so Wasserman, I don't know if he was, he, he might have helped start LinkedIn. I'm not sure. There's a couple. Maybe it was, it was that. Uh, okay, more physics here. Uh, and this is more, yeah, so this is more serious kind of physics business down here. Uh, lots of good stuff. Okay. Okay. So of course, networks aren't new. I've touched on this, right? So we've had graph theory for a long time. And we've codified it as such. We have Euler sort of famously thinking about bridges in Konigsberg. Um, <coughs> and then, you know, just making up crazy things. Okay, so, uh, so, and so, so with graph theory for a long time, social networks became a real field in the 1930s. I mean, of course, we know about social phenomena, but being, being codified as a field, that's the 30s. Um, <coughs> and uh, so, you know, what's going on? Of course, it's data, right? So it's because we can get at data. So data mercenaries can just go and slurp things off the web and uh, start looking at it, yeah. <coughs> Which is fun, right? Okay, and also very dangerous because you know you just you, know, you start to say things about humans that may or may not be true. All right, uh, but it's there, and you've got to look at it, right? So what's happening is um, you get th you know these people have been remain, I suppose, to some some extent upset about this because there's a lot of studies of small groups, which is fair enough, right? Like you, you go and look at a school or the famous study of a karate club, and so on. You, you go and look at it, and you find out who's friends with whom, and, and right, and how it how it all works. Um, so you still have to do that. I mean, you still have to, of course, do that. Right? So that's fine. But this is complementary. So this is not framed well enough like this. It's complementary work. It will tell you other things that, you know, when you get down to the details of smaller spaces, maybe you have to think about it. Okay. So, um, <coughs> but it, again, you know, data is always, uh, it's the sunlight that we need. Um, and of course, you know, better and better data is always the issue, but there's a transition from small to big data. Uh, so, <coughs> you know, start to measure things is good. I've said this. Okay, and then what we try to get to, and you'll see this is really manifest in the preferential attachment models. It's not at all in the small world model, the original one. It's nothing about mechanisms, but it turns out to be very powerful all the same. But this is kind of what we want. We want to understand how things become things, right? This, I think, is the big distinction between pure math and everyone else, right? Is that... Um, Pure math, everything is just true. You're kind of just uncovering the truth that somewhat, you know, and there's a big book, right? Edish, I think, said this, right? Sort of a, you're, just, you're just uncovering, right? You're just opening it up. Um, uh, but <coughs> so everything is kind of possible. Because why not? But, you know, the, the universe only produces certain kinds of things, and that's our thing. Okay, so if you don't like this, then the really safe place to be is string theory, I think. That's really... <laughs> Philosophy is still a good home to people who don't care about data. It's still pretty safe, I think. There was a study recently. Uh, they were looking at what philosophers around the world believe to be true, will take as true. And I think there are only four things that 70% or more agreed on. And that's that, our, that math, math is okay. <laughs> that um, our feelings are all, you know, our experience, how we experience the world is also okay. Like it's, it's you know, a real thing. Um, I think atheism was one, but neuroscience, not so much, right? So like that was not stuff that's coming out of neuroscience. Like, eh. I mean, crazy things come out of neuroscience, but you know, it's very, anyway, all right. So they're, they're, they're trying to keep themselves safe. There's a lot of arguing from philosophers now about being the most important characters and also saying some very silly things. If you look at the stone, actually, the New York Times at the moment, very interesting. Of revealing. Okay, <coughs> we can get a little too excited about this, right? We say we have all this data, 
And then we start to produce statements like this. So the end of theory. This is this is this is an um, article in uh, Wired. So Anderson's sort of a big guy. That the data deluge makes scientific theory obsolete. It's all over. We don't need to do any more theory. Stop it. Stop the theory. Put the put the pencil down. Um, this is yeah. So this goes overboard. It it means that uh, it's it's probably reasonable for for Google or to some extent, right? And or to a large extent and I don't know, Walmart and these kinds of places, right? They, they're just building these gigantic correlation <laughs> kind of database matrices. And, and, you know, it's kind of a warm day. It's October. There's something. The Red Sox did this. Okay, we'll put more of these in the store. You know, just, right? Why not? They don't care why that happens necessarily, but um, it's an old story, but uh, now, I suppose. But I think it was because of things like Hurricane Ivan. Was that in Florida? Did that hit Florida badly? Years ago, you, you weren't born. Okay. Is, it, is, that, is that right? Okay. So there are, I guess they get a number, but there's something like this. And so they, the preparation was that one of the things they <laughs> that just popped up on their list of things to you know do with stores was not, I don't know, add more sandbags and so on. It was pop tarts. People apparently buy lots of pop tarts before before a hurricane is coming. So so they duly just you know delivered more pop tarts to the stores. So, <coughs> you know, they don't, right? They just do it. Uh, so there's, uh, there's this paper. Okay, this is, this, is a more, this is a little overboard, but it's a good thing to talk about and get you know, upset about. The unreasonable effectiveness of data. And so that is a play on this. This is this kind of a little meme in science. The unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics and natural science, which is Vigna's, it's a classic piece kind of pondering like why does math kind of <laughs> work at all basically when we describe real things you know which is one of those things that's all fine until you think about it for a while and you're like mm. anyway and then you stop thinking about it and then you're okay and you keep describing reality you know like <laughs> you have to get in the right brain space you're like oh, kind of you know but mostly you're like what are you talking about you know <laughs> of course it works counting things one two three things there's a thing a thing and a thing one two three math you know Feels good. Um, anyway, this is uh, sort of these guys are all at Google, so it's it's a slightly, you know, I think less over the over the top kind of thing. But it, you know, if you, you should you should look at what they have in here, uh, where they yeah, <coughs> data is helpful. Anyway, so a little too much, but we we you know this is this is description, right? We're describing things. If we want to do real science, we still need to understand things. So that's mechanisms and and so on, right? Which maybe we can't, you know, maybe there uh, we've talked about this in this course, maybe. <laughs> Maybe this is where we end up, and we're like, ah, I don't know. Octopuses are too hard. OK. <coughs> anyway, all right. So very, very simple things, the way, way we'll talk about these uh, networks. Um, so OK, so we talk there are different ways of saying it. So if we're in math, we'll probably say vertices, because it sounds better. Uh, but nodes, right? So nodes uh, are the, are the you know, they're the, they're the entities that are connected together, and they could be all sorts of things. It's a bit odd maybe in some physical ones, but they might be junctions, for example. You know, in blood networks, it could be a junction or a fork in a river. Of course, people, uh, proteins, this is, I'll give you examples. I mean, proteins then are interacting with other proteins, so it's not a physical network. Web pages, whatever it is, okay? Organisms that eat other organisms. Talk about food networks, fun. Okay. Uh, so and link, and also we'll talk about nodes and links. These are the connections. This is this is, uh, you know, funny thing, right? So we've directed and undirected. We've surfed around on these quite a bit. Graph theory is full of this. We've done a lot of analysis on these kinds of things, uh, but they can be certainly weighted. And this is this took years to kind of get to. Um, there was just so much we could do with a link existing or not, just being a link of weight one. So. How to? This is just. And I don't think we'll, we won't touch that necessarily in this course. But this is obviously what's going on, right? There are strengths to links, uh, and really, the also, and we'll, I'll mention again, is that many uh, interaction networks are uh, the, the the links are ephemeral, right? So there's an interaction between a social network, the interaction be between people, then they go away, and then they interact again. You know, so you have to even say if you have a whole email database, it's that's a hard thing to then play around with and say, OK, these people are friends. Like, how do you define that? How do you figure that out? That's hard, right? So you have to see if there's some sort of funny pattern in the way they connect. Oh, OK, vertices and edges people like as well. All right, so these are the words. 
Um, so here's a big thing. This was not appreciated in really until this Barabasi Albert paper. Is no degree. I mean, you know, we know it matters in mathematical and so on, but really, really, this is the, the big deal. A little more than no degree, but this is sort of the, the big thing. So it's very simple. It's just the number of friends or the number of links per node, k sub i. We usually put make this k. Uh, so it's the ith node. So it can be 0, 1, 2. So if you have no mates, you have 0. Um, and well, I, I like this kind of funny um, notation. So average degree, it's not perfect, but average degree is usually uh, written like this. Sometimes you'll see z in a lot of the physics stuff. Um, just because they did, probably because Newman did a million times, so everyone copied it, because they're good humans, sometimes Z. Uh, so very simple thing, right? So if you have the number of edges M, so each edge, there's some very just nice simple things to think about. So each edge has a node on each end, right? So two times M, so that's two, that, that gives you the number of uh, edges emanating from nodes. So 2M divided by M will be the average degree, right? Tiny things. And sometimes we'll need to use this as well. So a calligraphic N for the set of I's neighbors. It's, it's surprising what comes out of just simple networks when you start to think about really basic types of contagion and so on. Where's that thing? You don't want that? Math cal? Okay. I've never seen that before. <laughs> we have a gamma function. You don't use the gamma function, <laughs> right? Got an integral in it. Why would yeah. you use it? <laughs> God damn it. No, I'm not going to write that down. Why would I write that down? I don't know why you would write that down. Where's the What's that? Where's the That horrible. So you're objecting to this? No, I'm just wondering where that came from. Do any other humans use it? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, um, a little bit. Yeah, right. Okay, font objections are fair enough. That's all right. Is, is I, so this is, if you put, put a real example for that. Yeah, so, right. So node I is going to have these buddies out here, right? And there are six of them in this case, and they'll be, you know, right? So they'll have their own labels. So if I, you know, this, this is number I equals seven here, whatever it is. This could be, you know, Bob and um, Karen, computer wife, Karen, right? But it's not saying the SpongeBob. Have no? SpongeBob? Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry. It's, it's the, so if I is 7, yeah. it doesn't, K, K, K is 7, it doesn't matter then? So uh, like you're not counting the number of 7 of your neighbor? It's all of your neighbor. Yeah, it's just specific to this neighbor. The size? So they're labeled nodes, they're labeled graphs, right? So this is, um, yeah, they're, they're, yeah, we don't do anything. So sometimes you'll think about unlabeled graphs and you'll talk about all the possible graphs of a, particular configuration. These are really, these are labeled, right? So there's a node that's node 1, and then there's a node that's node 2, and there's a node that's node 3. So this is a different graph to this one, even though they're isomorphic, right? So these are different, th these will be different things. That's, that's maybe an important piece to say, um, right? 3 has no friends here. And this is you. This matters, right? Over here, haha. -ha. <coughs> uh, so, so yeah, so you can anthropomorphize these things. That might help, um, unless you feel like you're an interchangeable part of a giant Borg. <laughs> okay, okay, then maybe imagine you're someone else, all right, <laughs> who dreams of a better world. Okay, how are we doing, apart from the horrific... <laughs> slash math cow. He's from, you've been from living in graph theory, so, okay. So, very simple thing, this is, this is, you know, these are super simple things. All right, so adjacency matrix is a uh, nice way of uh, playing around with graphs, and again, so here's a situation where we just have weights of, si of, of um, one, so this is, uh, so, depends how you want to define these things, but let's say this is I connects to J, right? So node 1 is connected to node 2, 3, and 4, and it's directed. Very simple thing. But you have to think about how this is structured. So 
There's two, and these are directed in this case. If you have to be careful when you're talking about J. So you would have a symmetric matrix if it was right, undirected, and then you have to be a little careful with the, the math. Ugh, it's pretty awful. So that's uh, one is connected to three, four. Two is connected to three and five. And five can be out here. There's no, there's no rocket science here, I guess. Uh, three is connected to one, so that they have a reciprocated um, thing. And so maybe you want to replace it by just a you know, one link. And then four is connected to two. I'm just amusing myself now. So four is connected to two and five, I think, right? And then five is connected to two and four. So, and this is reciprocated. All right, fine. Um, so this could be weighted. Uh, when you get to large networks, this is a bad thing unless you can store it as a sparse matrix. That's good, right? Um, I guess I will say this again, but okay, yeah, well I have it right here. So it's sparse. Uh, most real networks are sparse, right? Most real large-scale networks are sparse. Yeah. <coughs> real large complex networks. Um, yeah. So, but often we store them as linked lists. That that's. Uh, so sort a of list of all of the, the links, that, that's a little tricky in terms of, you know, you have to be careful with that, uh, and especially if your network's evolving and changing, you know, how you, how you deal with that data. Very simple if your network's changing here, because you just swap things on and off. <coughs> all right, so they're very simple things. Okay, so I've said these things, so they're large, when we talk about what, you know, what is a complex network? All right, all right, all right. But generally speaking, that they, they this is a, you know, what is large, but they, they're generally large, they are, almost most examples are, are sparse, right? So there's a, not so many edges. Um, I mean, certainly there are, you know, there's a lot of density in, in, in some of the, so we'll see some of this later on actually when we go to scaling. Like for example, the amount of white matter versus gray matter in the brain as a function of organism type. Um, so the white matter goes up relatively, right? As you go up with, as gray matter increases. So the dent, the, and white matter is the uh, kind of connective, they're like the links sort of thing, right? Okay, so there's some really interesting stuff in here about that sort of thing. I mean, you can think about organizations, how many links they have, how many functional links, blah, blah, blah. Um, all sorts of things. So, uh, you know, I'll give you some examples. These are all, but again, this is trying to show you how enormous this whole thing is, right? So this is where I started with River Networks, but it's a, it's a great example. There's a lot of work done on that, trying to understand these things for universal Patterns, there's, they are connected to, um, I have it over here, blood networks, for example, there's a lot of parallels between them. So these are delivery systems, right? So, or collection systems. So you can think of river networks as collection. So you have a 2D surface and you're trying to collect things that, inadvertently perhaps, but you're trying to end up uh, collecting things at, uh, at a single output or a number of single outputs. Blood networks are, have two of these things, right? You have the distribution one and the collection one, arterial and venous. So you're solving there a problem of a s from a central location out to 3D and, and back. You know, FedEx has to solve these problems. Amazon has to solve them, spreading, moving things around. Uh, so that's the, okay, so you can't really see this on this resolution. P people try to make pictures of the internet very, very hard. This is an old one. Um, <coughs> Leaf networks, you know, it's a whole lot of business. There you have, you've gone from a 3D delivery thing to a 2D uh, situation. So they have some different structures. People try to make parallels be all between all of these, say that river networks are like these guys, but that's not true. Um, you know, these have a nice robustness to them, where you can cut out leaves, for example, you can cut out the uh, central part here and it'll still function, right? Some nice work by Marcelo Mas Maniasco at uh, uh, Rockefeller, actually, yeah, with, uh, with high school students from Stuyvesant doing funny things with leaves. Uh, so just for these physical networks, you talk about dis ones that are purely distribution type networks and ones that are redistribution type ones, right? So you might think about uh, road networks as being, you know, locally there's sort of a collection, um, right? And we'll, I'll show you some of this later on. This is gonna be quite nice, beautiful work, uh, right? So you have a city center, so there's, 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 there's this kind of pretty natural structure here, but if you think about the whole US, then there's all of these patterns of getting people around, and so there's sort of a redistribution story maybe for that. Um, it depends on the cost of travel and how long and the cost of staying in nodes as you move around. You get very different kinds of setups. 
All right, all right, physical things. <laughs> the blogosphere, which sort of is, is going to bits. This is an old um, blog thing. Um, hilarious, the blogosphere. It's really in trouble. It's just falling apart. Facebook and Twitter has, has crushed it. Uh, biochemical networks, again, this is a big data story. We were able to kind of, you know, gene protein ones, we're able to get all of these connections out. It's not perfect, but we're building and building and building the data sets there. Um, food webs, this is a tough one, right? You have to sacrifice some graduate students to find out who actually <laughs> is whom. Enter the graduate student into the, foods, into the uh, food web, you know. Right, you draw, you, that would be, gr that'd be a great paper, right? So you have you know, the trophic levels, whatever, and there's a bear, and then there's Smitherton, is <laughs> <laughs> who contributed to figure four of the paper. <laughs> <laughs> and to that bear's uh, dinner. <laughs> um, hard thing to measure. So it's, it's, you know, I don't know if we'll be able to, I mean, maybe we will. I mean, people make up s sneaky little things and you, you, know, you put it out there in the wild and it gets eaten and then you can find these little tiny things later on and see it went through a bear and then a, you know, a worm or something, right? And maybe, maybe we can do that. We need to get to, a, what you need to get to is remote sensing, right? NSA style, that's what you need to get to. That would help a lot. <laughs> I mean, people, you know, yeah, exactly, right, right. So we should give them Twitter accounts, yeah. I ate a fish. <laughs> <laughs> and they do what we do, basically. Right. <laughs> you can set up a camera with, like, a specifically photograph. Oh, yeah. Cameras. You put cameras around? Yeah, 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 yeah sure. Like yeah, yeah. Well, there's a one where they, there was, <laughs> there was that one with the bears that, where they're rubbing on a tree. Have you seen that one? Okay. Yeah. That's kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> bear cam. Bear cam. <laughs> so you need bear cam, but you need ant cam, right? I mean, you need the whole thing. I mean, I think ants take up, I don't know, 50% of the Amazon or something. Biomass is some crazy amount. Maybe you should have cameras to leave and then the ants will carry them around. <laughs> Uh, all right, we need to instrument these organisms, obviously. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 of course, yeah. Um, yeah, we do do tracking, and I think, so there's been some nice stuff with uh, 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 migratory birds recently, right? We put little backpacks on, you know, and the birds take off, and they're like, good God, what am I doing? <laughs> but uh, it turns out, you know, they take different uh, courses that, than we thought, and they travel faster or slower in different ways, but I mean, you know, right? I mean, we know they kind of end up here and they start here and so on. We make some beautiful movies, like wing migration. Um, <coughs> and, uh, but but that, was a, that was a transition, yeah? You had to strap a backpack onto a bird. Pretty good. You know, get some squirrels and strap on some <laughs> cameras and stuff. Yeah, all right. <laughs> but, you know, so the survey method is not going to work, right? It doesn't scale, plus they don't really answer. <laughs> well, the bear would eat you too. All right. <coughs> wow. All right. So all the animals will be running around with little backpacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we're happy to do the tagging, right? We'll do that. We'll put colors on things, which is, you know, okay. Yeah. Wow. So, all right. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. You could. Oh my God. Well, you could have the whole. You could put this a panda cam, right? You could have panda cam for out in the wild. That would be bad. But you could, you know, instrument the few you've got out there, and they, yeah. well, yeah, I guess it would end badly. But, um, but you know, you could have, um, I don't know, like there's a polar bear going this way, and you could track it on online, and and there's a, you know, a seal swimming under the oh water. No. <laughs> no. Its little tracker just goes, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> it just is off. No, they combine. They, they combine. All right. Yeah, the bear has more track. Oh, the bear ends up with all the trackers inside it. Right, with the truth. <laughs> okay, sorry. All right. So this is a tough problem, but you guys seem to have uh, got all the terrible ideas that we need to uh, solve that one. <laughs> uh, the web, airline networks. I'm going to call these interaction networks, right? Call networks, obviously, uh, uh, <laughs> some of these have been provided to uh, 
you know, the, the, these are held within, of course, and they analyze them, but yeah, they've been, yeah, shared for a, <laughs> right, hi. Um, the media, very interesting uh, thing. Um, <coughs> you know, how do, how do these things interact? Uh, this is a, this is, you know, this is a hard thing to get at, but you could start to see you know, news stories, how they spread around, and you know, who picks up what, and who's kind of because there's a the media talking about the media as well, so you'd have that level. <laughs> like a good place to watch, you know, Fox News or MSNBC is on the Daily Show, basically. Yeah, right, right. So you like what? Uh, and, that, and that's been around for a long time. The, 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 you know. So <coughs> all sorts of funny networks. Okay, a um, couple of examples, right? So. And I've mentioned these before, but this is a this is you know, a, 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 a work that's uh, got a lot of recognition. But it's a product space, uh, so it's called the product space um, of for uh, for nations. And the idea is that um, so you take a nation and or country and you measure the things that it produces. You just count up the things it produces, right? That it exports. And then this this is a pretty crazy map. Uh, Cesar Hidalgo, he does a lot of beautiful things, but this is, this is, I mean, you have to get in here and understand this one. The idea is that uh, if you're producing maybe, you know, just uh, some agriculture and fish, then you look at nations that are adjacent to that, that have that sort of same thing. Maybe there are some that are producing, you know, garments now and some other things. You can kind of see how uh, states can evolve, right? They don't just start a big microchip. Um, you know, factory in the right, that doesn't just emerge. So there's a there's a sense. This is what this is trying to provide is, you know, what's a jet? What kinds of um, given your portfolio of exports? What's what's a jet? What are you adjacent to? You know, what can you evolve to next? So there's a lot of uh, work in there. I think there's a direct comparison of maybe Chile and South Korea in terms of the how they've evolved, right? And so you can see, yeah. Um, you, there's an argument that you know, Chile was in a certain position that allowed it to get to here in the next 10 years and so on, and whereas South Korea was further along and could move. All right, so this is a... <coughs> I'm just throwing in some nice networks for you as well. That's, that's sort of the bonus here. Uh, um <coughs> okay, so here you go. Interaction is snogging. This is a term that is sometimes used in other countries. Just means kissing, let's say that. And uh, so this is from a high school in the Midwest. It's uh, work done by Peter Behrman. He was uh, in charge of a, one of the institutes that I was part of at Columbia. ISERP, the Institute for Social and Economic Research and Policy. Sort of sounds like slurp. Anyway, so, or burp. It's not a good, yeah. Anyway, so this is, uh, so th this has a number of good things in it. All right, so pink for girls, blue for boys. So you can think about that. Um, and this is over, I think, six months or a year. Jefferson High School. Let's call it Sunnydale, because I, that, that's funny for me. Um, okay, so um, <coughs> this looks bad, right? Okay, because you drop a disease in and it goes, bonk, <laughs> which is sort of, uh, there's a ton of analysis of things where that's what, they, that's what they do. Okay, here's the kissing network, let's put some back. But this has had a whole temporal development. And as I said, this is like now becoming a hot topic. Um, so, and I'll mention again, I mean, it sounds absolutely, it's, it's embarrassing to say it, but you know, like you can't do that, right? You have to look at the history of the thing. Yeah, but we love producing these, ne these pictures, right? We love it. Everyone wants to see a picture of a network because it's gonna be fantastic and revelatory, right? But in fact, it's very obfuscating. It could be pretty, right? Like this, you know, this one from Cesar is lovely, but it's, it's somewhat inscrutable as well. So we tend to actually not look at the <laughs> network. I mean, there are some better, there are definitely better uh, facilities for doing that now. Gephi's kind of the standard, but uh, okay. And maybe you can get a big feel for the thing, which is fair enough, for sure. But uh, it can be complicated. All right, so so that's a this, what what you call accumulating network data. Very bad thing to do, but done all the time. All the time, because you just it's just you know it looks good. It's easy to it's you can't help yourself. All right, so. Um, okay, so lots of things, uh, lots of you know, social networks, right? There's all sorts of things. Boards, boards and directors are a good example of something we can't really go into in this course, but in the next one, um, so so-called bipartite. Well, we'll talk. No, we'll talk about it this a little bit. Bipartite affiliation graphs. So very simply, right? So you have people, right? 
leaders of the free world or whatever they are, or people with lots of money, and boards of things, right? So this is, you know, whatever it is, McDonald's, I don't know, blah, 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 all these things. And so you might have people that are on different boards. And from that, you get a, uh, a social network for people, right? And you also get one for the boards, which is useful to think about, right? So these boards have some strength of tie between them because there are people that are on both of them. Okay, so very natural thing. But it's just, talk about this is, so, so it's a bit, if you, you might be looking at a world where you just see these interactions, right? For some reason, you look at a society, you just see these interactions. What's, what's a great challenge is to pull back out and see this, if you can. Yeah. Um, because there are venues in which people are interacting. Can you, can you just get that from the bear network? Uh, and if, you, of course, you have this data, this is the way you want to think about it, right? All right, organizations, Facebook, Twitter. When I first made these slides years ago, you know, and they've evolved tremendously, but were, I had MySpace. <laughs> I think I had Facebook and MySpace, yeah. Yeah. Like no. Because you're too young, you've already had it. It's always been there. <laughs> it's true with the timeline thing where they want you to fill in everything you've ever done. That's kind of trying to create that as well. Uh, what? Just forget everything. Oh God. So when do you think? Okay. So Twitter's 2006 is actually when it starts. That's kind of a joke, basically. And then it just struggles along and takes off in 2008, end of 2008. Yeah. Um, and then these guys try to be like these guys because they want to share everything because they see that that, you know, has some... They don't like privacy. Yeah. So if you've seen some of this, those visualizations of how privacy has changed on, tw on Facebook, it's quite, not, you know, the, sort of this opening out repeatedly, you know, like no one can see anything else about you, right? And then, well, maybe all your photos, and then maybe what your friends do, and then. There's actually a good Russian social network called uh, In Contact, basically. Yeah. And uh, interestingly enough, it also started in 2006, so everyone says it's a copycat of what Facebook Well, you're allowed to copy that, because it copied itself well, already, you know, so, yeah. yeah. But it, it's been pretty popular. Is it the number one one? Is it? Yeah, it oh, okay. Like a, uh, daily audience about 30 million people. And Facebook has not, yeah. Well, Facebook is older than Twitter because it's worldwide. It's pretty popular. Okay. Oh, so they're both, they're both, okay, right, right, right. Yeah, so the history of these things, so there's Weibo, right, in China. Uh, yeah, in China. Um, and there was a different one in Brazil for a long time f out of um, Google. What's it? See, I kind of remember. Anyway, that, uh, that might have. Brazilians just loved it. They just, it was just huge. You just oh, uh, What's that called? Orchids. It's the, orchid. It's the name of the guy, right? So a Norwegian guy invented it on his Fridays or whatever. And it was gigantic in Brazil. Okay. <laughs> You're like, hey, they love it. Uh, but I think it might have... Oh, I don't know. Maybe Google just, like, threw it away. They, they had to. Of course they did. Well, I'm sure they did. Yeah, right. Orchid. Yeah, wow. Um, so... This data is, you know, something we can get at. And, uh, oh, God, this just becomes more and more worse and worse as I go on. Uh, you know, we, right? We can remotely sense social interactions now. I mean, it's pretty crazy, right? You, I mean, we, all, we did have the phone thing going on for a long time and mail before that. You could see who was, if you wanted to sit in the post office and look at who's, you know, you want to be a spook. Um, but now when you think about Twitter and, of course, Facebook, uh, it's pretty, it's pretty insane, um, and, uh, and of course we've been helping ourselves to it, as it turns out. So one of the things the and I don't think I have this written in here, but and uh, the NSA had a, a piece that appeared a couple of like last year where they said, well we're only going out three degrees from each person, right? So we'll and I did I mention this? I'm sure I mentioned this, but the three three degrees from you, right? So your friends are one degree, and then your this is a this is a confusion of the words degree. So let's say, right, your degree is your number of friends. So let's say one hops, right? So one hop out is your friends. Another hop out is your f the friends of your friends, who you may know something about. And then three hops out, that's the edge of your social universe. And there are lots of nice uh, kind of analyses of uh, social networks where we have a lot of data where you can see that the, 
chance of you becoming friends with someone who's three steps away from you is pretty similar to like a random human being, right? So that's the universe horizon sort of view. Um, but you get a lot of people in three steps. I mean, you get a huge number of people in three steps. So if you just sprinkle some people through the US or wherever and then just take three steps out from them, wow. It's a fantastic number of people. So it sounds really, it sounds pretty benign because it's just three steps. Just three steps. Yeah. <coughs> anyway, all right. So great data sets, not perfect, blah, 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 but you know, windows into behavior that we never had before. This is if you want to look at this again in uh, detail. All right, okay, fine. <coughs> it's kind of amusing. All right, so what this is, th this is the monogamous ones. So there's a time 63. Yeah, yeah, a lot going on. It's also a survey data. Is that one student? No. Uh, each, yeah. I mean, or is it each, so you see each three monogamous relationships. So there's one that has that many? So, so you mean, this is, so there's 63 of these. Right. Yeah. Does that mean there's one of those? There's one of this, but there's, this thing is just one, yeah, there's one of this. Yeah, most, most people are in this team here. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the giant component. Yeah. To, right. There's only the relationship in the entire high school. So there might just be some like single people floating around. Who knows what's going on. Okay, so um, my college, in Trinity College in Australia, is at Melbourne Uni, and it's, this, it's the same as the English, right? They're trying to pretend that they didn't leave or whatever. Um, you know, where the colleges are around the university, so you live in these things, and they're nice, and you have oak tables, and you wear your gowns to dinner, and you have carving lessons, and the whole, really, not really, yeah, uh, really silly. Um, really, there were carving lessons. Okay, so, yeah, because the food would come out, and someone would have to stand up and deliver it. Um, you know, the high, t high table in Latin, Latin grace, the whole business. Anyway, um, once a year, so lots of funny things happen, just as they do in uh, college places, but once a year, there would be anonymously, there would be posted something like this, the snog map. And it would be, you know, there would be names of everyone. And of course, some of these were not well known to people, right? So, you know, and so someone ends up being a, you know, a, a hub. In, I mean, it's just, just going to happen, right? There'll be a few of these out here, but there'll be someone who's, you know, connected like 10 people. And that was always, and it was, a very, it was anonymous. No one knew who was the, you know, snog map creator who would then choose, you know, in this secrety way, the new snog map creators and so on. Yeah. <coughs> so was it snogging or was it um, snavel? Anyway, so what, some term like this, right? Is it bisexual one? That's not the right? Yes, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not perfectly bisexual. It's actually Yeah. So obviously. You know, we touch on reporting issues here. People are not going to tell you everything, um, right? There are little, there are lines to draw in here that aren't there, right? Yeah. So that's a, that is, that is a massive problem that has basically been ignored by the network community. Is that you've got your data set? We've struggled with it. Others have struggled with it. Uh, what if this is fifty percent of all the? You know, like, can you try to even reconstruct? Could you? Can you, you know, if you're going to say all these things about this, like the average number of snogs and things, is that, ev is that even, you know, what, you know, how bad could it be? How bad could your estimates be if you've got 30% or 40%? Do you know how many you're missing? We, had a, we have a funny thing with Twitter where we did early on know how many we were missing, which is an, in, you know, an unusual <laughs> circumstance. But often you don't even know how many you're missing. So how do you statistically deal with that? So one, one way to deal with it, and it's the most common way, is to not deal with it. You just say, here is my thing, and I will now <laughs> analyze it. <laughs> maybe in a little line at the end, of course, if we had more data, then maybe it's a, but okay. So that's a really big problem. It's really, you know, it's great data, it's very complicated, it's messy. Um, but, you, you know, it might be that, and this is not saying, just for forgetting that this is, you know, kissing or whatever. I mean, these... These people here seem to be, uh, you know, one, four steps apart. But if we're missing the fact, if these were just friendships, say, if we're missing the fact that, you know, they're actually friends with each other, then that's a big difference, right? So if we start to see something correlated between these two people, and we're not picking up their, their friendship for whatever, because we've got to, you know, we, we can measure good things. We can measure a lot about them individually, 
but their network is harder to measure, then we're going to start saying, well, look, these people are four steps apart and they're correlated and so on, right? But it might be that they're really only two. Yeah, so you ever deal with the opposite problem? Some of those connections aren't right? Okay, so yeah, 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 right. So that's a, that's a really great question. So um, yeah, you can have false things and you might know that about the way you're measuring it. It could be that like for some reason they're being pu actively put in there as well. Oh, that's interesting. Just to make these connections that, that looks right. Yeah. Twitter has to auto follow. So if you follow yeah, them, yeah, yeah, yeah. All back. that stuff, yeah. Google has to deal with this because one of Goog Google's thing was always about links, right? right. And so it, before you would just say, okay, if I want people to find this page because it's about, like, if they search for fish, you just put fish a million times, right? But now eventually people realize, <laughs> yeah, in the metadata, yeah. it's just not good. Um, and then, of course, so that led to bad behavior, but then, you know, the next level of bad behavior is to make a million little websites that are all over the world and they all say kind of fish. They point to each other. And then, you know, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a important flip side of that, yeah. I think the majority of networks that people contend with as scientists are subsampled, but... Um, Maybe for secrety, spooky things as well. I guess I'm thinking of that. You know, where the bad guys are sort of sending extra signals, maybe or something. There's that. Uh, but maybe your measurements are bad. You know, well, maybe you're just your measurements are bad. Yeah, yeah. Maybe your measurement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think. I guess I'm f feeling like we are on the side of not getting up, like just missing these things. So, all right, yeah, no, fair enough. I, I think the majority of work that, the small amount of work that's been done on missing links, on, 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 on uh, sorry, I should say the network not being accurately represented is on missing data. I think that's fair. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's framed that way, yeah. But, uh, it, and we've talked about it a little bit and trying to figure out, you know, what do you do if uh, there are just, yeah, different kinds of errors, right? So you maybe you just say corrupted. Yeah. So when do you feel like bootstrapped this is like I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So yeah, that's why we don't talk. That's what we don't do. Um, <coughs> wow, I'm talking a lot. Uh, okay, so this is a. I, I could find out if that's true. I should put a date on that. Walmart probably has ten times as much as that now. Uh, Right, so you, that's why the stores like you to have their cut, right? Or they like you to shop, Amazon likes you to shop on Amazon because they have fantastic data about what you've done and what other people have done. They had an article on Target where they said that they were predicting things that were people found really creepy, like they were predicting like teen pregnancies right. and stuff. Right, so that was a, right, so that's a, that was a big, you're right, Target was a good one. So they, the, um, the male came to this family, right, and it said, here's some stuff for if you're having a baby, blah, blah, blah. And the father's very upset, but it was correct. Uh. His teenage daughter was, in fact. <laughs> so Target knew. I guess she knew, because she was buying certain things. <laughs> and it triggered, you know, um, yeah. <coughs> so that was, that was a huge story. Okay, so yeah, right. So now it's the next level of creepiness. Yeah. 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 I mean, it is an arms race. Right, yeah. yeah it's right. Good. <laughs> uh, you hope that you, yeah, if you keep going with it, you get rid of the creepiness, but maybe not. Maybe you just make it super sophisticated creepiness <laughs> that doesn't feel creepy. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's the worst, yeah. <laughs> okay, good example. Uh, so, um, you know, so these are what I call relational networks. They're not necessarily, so the physical ones, obviously lots of things are moving around. Interactional ones, there's a real substance to them, right? If it's planes moving, whatever it is, people are moving around, the web. The web's kind of an interesting example because, you know, there are, you know, you, you click on Google and Google has to respond. And so Google had to get bigger and bigger and bigger. It's a really it's a physical response. Um, you know, I don't know about words, right? Words are, if I say cat more than dog, then maybe that's, it doesn't, 
you know, lead to some sort of, maybe, maybe it does for cats. But anyway, so um, th these are the idea that this is sort of lifted more away from reality or you know, physical stuff. So all right, all ideas, knowledge, all this sort of thing, all in the same kind of uh, world. Yeah, metadata. Um, so the, you know, we're, we're figuring out ways of, of storing knowledge. Um, obviously, the Wikipedia appeared, and that's been a big thing. Um, stuff like tags and so on, being able to search through these systems, so this is a huge deal, right? So people, of course, create the, the uh, information here. So Flickr. Uh, early on became great for searching for photos. I mean, obviously it's full of photos, but because of tagging became a very searchable thing. Whereas Google was terrible, right? Google was absolutely awful at image search. It's better now, they have more complicated things. But um, you know, if you put red apple into Flickr, you would get a lot of red apples. But you know, uh, uh, Google was relatively terrible. Um, so <coughs> anyway, this is just talking about the kinds of, the ways these networks are emerging. Very interesting. Uh, counterpoint is, of course, the Encyc Encyclopedia Britan Britannica, which had two versions of it, right? So there's the alphabetic one, and then a knowledge-based one, which is, I've forgotten the names of these things, but there were huge arguments, actually, about how you should store knowledge, and people really objected to the ABC approach, the ABC Darians. They, some people really got incredibly upset about this, because, you know, why is, you know, aardvark next to an airplane? This just doesn't make any sense, right? So... <laughs> Right, so it was kind of against God. It just it was just wrong for these things to be near each other. This is just, you know, and we're f we're the problem, of course, was we're obliged to put things in three dimensions, right? So we're storing things in three dimensions. We invent things like the you know Dewey invents a Dewey decimal system, which is kind of really silly, unless you're Dewey in 1880, and it's evolved, right? But um, you know, it's a it's a categorization of the world that it maybe is not for everyone. So. Information really lives in however many dimensions, right? So when you get to a web type situation, then you can lift out. <laughs> right? So you can put hierarchies on top. <coughs> Bless us all, actually. It's <laughs> <coughs> really what that means, yeah. Um, so you can lift you can lift out, you can then impose structure on it. Maybe there is some you know, structure, but you can say, I want to order it in this way. You guys all know this, I suppose. But uh, I mean of course, but um, it's, a, it's a great transition, yeah. yeah. Very different experience, right? I mean, I, I spent most of my childhood looking through, uh, you know, th with words, thinking about, you know, looking through dictionaries, right, trying to find, like playing Scrabble and you're trying to find, looking, it's a ridiculous thing to do, you know. But uh, you had to store knowledge in, in some physical space, so that's another thing to do. Um, this you just can't see, so I'll leave it on the slide, but it's basically, uh, it's based on how people move around in science, so it, it gives you some sense of how sciences are functionally actually connected. I mean, we have ways of organizing science and all sorts of things. Oh, it's just too hard to read. I think it's like 800 by 600. How do you, how do you feel about these data sets and uh, <coughs> how they represent social activity? Because there's so much higher order. Well, so this is, to, I can't remember what this is taken from, but it's basically, you know, people moving around in journals and so on, right? So yeah. it's a functional representation of, a, of what sci how scientists connect things. Um, I mean, but like so, what do you mean? Yeah. I mean, like, people like to test things on, like, archives, citation networks. Oh, right, because okay. Because it's much more... Because it's accessible, yeah. accessible, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, often what, and, and this is what started to happen over the last few years, is that you end up examining a lot of different kinds of networks. If you're trying to show something pretty general and universal, so you have papers that involve, they'll, they'll have an example of an organizational network, they'll have um, the neural structure of some worm, right? They'll have <coughs> gene, gene. I mean, they're just things that are completely unrelated to each other. And then they'll, you know, actigraphs, I mean, all sorts of silly things. And then show that, you know, their, their method works on all of them. Because you're right, I mean, you, you, you have this, this, this concern of, um, <coughs> you know, that it's a bit special in some way. Fair enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, if you're studying Twitter, it's Twitter, you know. 
And then if you want to really, so th but it's very interesting, so you talk about it for a long time. If you then want to say it means more about everything else, then you have to go and find those other data sets. Yeah, right. <coughs> um, wow. Yeah, okay, so there's this. This is a mental health break, which is a good place to finish. Basically, just goes on. Um, <laughs> this one managed to get buried. <laughs> this, is, this YouTube provides. Nonsense. This is just like a, a neural plan for you. Just okay. With your brain, just like you can do with your brain. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, it could have. It could have so The internet. The internet. <laughs> All right. It's viral. I'm sure, yeah, right, exactly. That's true. This is everywhere. If I found it, it's everywhere. Um, yeah. So here's the thing to finish with. That was kind of an odd place to put that. Um, <coughs> this will, we'll start, we'll say this again next, I'll say this again on, uh, what day is it? <laughs> Thursday, Tuesday. So this is a big problem, right? Yes, we've, I've shown you a few pretty pictures, but this is generally what most graphs are kind of like. You can, you can show some, Overall community structure, which is very helpful, I suppose. But you know, often they're a mess. This is just 500 nodes. Um, the average degree is four, which isn't much. And it is a pure random network. Um, so even when things are good, it can be very, um, and here's my, here's my quote, it can be quite um, misleading, right? So here's a very good analogy, which aids understanding wonderfully while being, strictly speaking, wrong in every possible way, which is not quite right for what I want to say, but it's funny. Um, so you need to somehow get out the meaningful aspects that help you compare across, right? You can show a nice picture and then a nice picture of this network. You have to do a lot more to say how they're different, right, functionally and so on. So that's the next piece is going to be about properties. And then we'll talk about these two big, um, two really giant uh, models that, that start a lot of it off. And then we'll go into all sorts of other things, spreading and so on. Okay, so networks are cool. They're everywhere. You're full of them. You're walking around with networks in you. You're part of networks, uh, and we can measure them. Fun, fun, fun. fun. Okay. Okay. Can't really explain the dog video. I mean, I just <laughs>